everyone and welcome back to my channel so in my hair update video I briefly talked about how when I started grazing waist length I felt like I shouldn't cut my hair and I want to talk a little bit more about that now because I didn't talk very thoroughly about it in that video I didn't want it to be too long but also my thoughts were just so scattered I don't know what was wrong with me that day. <laughs> so I don't want my channel to be a serious place, so these types of videos will be few and far in between, but I thought that it would be important to talk about it since I did bring it up as a subject of discussion already. So for a little background, I'm from the American South where the Ting Yong Law was a thing. Black women had to cover their hair because frankly, white women felt their social status was being threatened and black women were getting too much attention. So a law was passed that forced black women to cover their hair while in public, in turn suppressing their creative expression with hairstyles. And um, because of that, it did create a sense of shame with black hair and then so in comes, you know, the feeling of having to assimilate with your relaxers and your jerry curls and things like that. And of course, at the time, black women were not being catered to, especially not in the cosmetic chemistry world. Like people didn't care about black women looking beautiful or feeling beautiful or anything like that. So. Um, studies about how to properly care for black hair types such as your type 3s and your type 4s weren't being researched at all so what you have are a bunch of black women and girls walking around with damaged processed hair so of course all that damage all the processing can cause really short hair so my assumption is that for a long time People, especially white people, only saw black people with really short, damaged hair. And I feel that in the past maybe 10 or 15 years or so, that there's been a real focus on proving that black women and girls can have hair, can have long hair, healthy hair, pretty hair, shiny hair. And so I did kind of feel like a spokesperson for black girls when my hair did get to be a certain length, like I felt like I was, uh, I don't know, I wanna say like an acceptable role model or something like that. I don't feel like I thought it at the forefront of my brain. I felt like, I feel like it was something that was in the back of my head. Like I can't cut my hair because you know, I'm proof that black girls can have long, shiny, pretty hair. So I can't cut it because I'm one less black girl that has long hair. So I don't know, maybe it's silly, but I definitely think it has a lot to do with the Western world and how they view black people and how they treat black women and how they make us feel like I don't know, we're just not like other women, like somehow, some way, our hair just doesn't grow. Like, we're a completely different species or something and our hair just doesn't grow and that's just part of our species. So, I really think that was the thing I felt was holding me back. I mean, of course there are family members and a couple of friends that were like, no, don't cut it, so pretty, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, that's one thing, you know, just people thinking, oh, your hair is pretty, so don't cut it. But then, you know, that societal feeling of I can't cut it because I'm black and I have to have long hair or I'm bald headed, I don't know. <laughs> so I kind of thought of, I don't know, if, am I traumatized? I don't know. But whenever I made the final decision to go through with cutting my hair, 
um, this memory came to mind. I was in high school. I don't know why I'm feeling like anxious now. Like my heart just, it feels like it's racing. <laughs> Maybe this is like a, a hard subject. I don't know. <sighs> so I was in high school. I was like 16 or 17 at the time. And as I mentioned in my hair update, from the time I was about 10 years old, I was the girl with the bob. I always had one, whether it was like a straight one, an asymmetrical one, a layered one, I always had them. So of course, at this time, I also had one too. And I was in my room hanging out with my friend, who we'll call Catherine, and my ex, Brad. His name isn't Brad, but we're gonna call him Brad. <laughs> and they were both white and they were old friends also. They used to play together as kids and I think they just like moved away so they lost contact and then we ended up all going to the same high school. And yeah, it was just by chance. And um, so completely unrelated to anything we were talking about, Catherine looks at me and says, did it take you your whole life to grow your hair that long? My hair at the time was about to my collarbone. Um, I was growing my hair out from a bob. Well, I wasn't growing it out, but it was a grown out bob. And I didn't really know how to answer. It was really, I was just taken aback that I just was like, what? <laughs> and Brad didn't say anything. He just kind of like looked at me and waited for me to answer as if he truly just didn't know that black people can grow hair at the same rate as other people. So I was like, this is so strange. <laughs> so anyways, I answered and I was like, no, um, my hair is growing out from a haircut. And every few months I cut my hair again to maintain my haircut. And she started saying something about how, you know, she knows that black girls have trouble growing their hair. And obviously she didn't know because she thought it took me 16 years of life to grow my hair to my collarbone. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I was just so like shook by it. And I wasn't sure if this was like a genuine question or if she was trying to do something like, if she was trying to embarrass me, I don't know. So, I mean, even though it was a little traumatic for me, obviously, as you can see since I remember it to this day and I'm 28, <laughs> um, yeah, there's no hard feelings. We don't talk anymore. She definitely showed her ignorance that day and also other days where she where she told me that she forgets that I'm black until she sees my hair and this was when I was natural so yeah until she sees an afro she forgets that I'm black <laughs> so that was something anyways that was the moment that came to me when I made the decision to just go through with cutting my hair because I felt like I didn't want instances like that to keep me from doing what I want with my hair and looking how I want to look and feeling how I want to feel. Um, I feel like in this year of our Lord 2020, if white people don't know that black people have hair yet, it is my choice and you know I cannot be responsible for their education I will not be responsible for their education so I'm gonna do what I want so I hope this video gave you a new perspective I hope it inspired you to do what you want to do with your body with yourself and don't let the thoughts of people outside of your community or even inside your community because sometimes sometimes the intra community issues are just as annoying but I hope this inspires you to do what you want to do with yourself anyways 
Thank you for watching. Bye.